Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching Out Here in the Redwoods. I'm Denise Riles, and for Chad Duran and everyone here, welcome, aloha, means hello, and goodbye. Come out, come out, wherever you are. We have an exciting show for you today. We have Ms. Diane Sherman from the Emma Center. And ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get a little spiritual on you tonight. It's gonna to be fascinating. So. Without further ado, welcome, Ms. Diane Sherman. Aloha. Aloha. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you for having this me. This is exciting. So this is our first time meeting. It is. Tell me a little bit about the Emma Center. What do you do there? I'm on the board of the Emma Center, and I do a group or class, depending on the time of year, at the Emma Center. And the Emma Center is a wonderful place for women who have been through trauma and abuse to come and sort of get their foundation rebuilt underneath them. We have all kinds of wonderful people who come and donate their time and their talents to help support these ladies to move forward in their life. We've created a really safe environment for them. We have a library, we have referrals, we have all kinds of things that they need after they've gotten through the original trauma to move forward in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they can come and hang out with us anytime. And there's a lot for them to do, see, and experience. Now, what do you mean by trauma? What kind of women do you see there mostly? Women who've been through any form of abuse or trauma. Okay, mental, physical, yes, or trauma, like yes. seeing something very tragic. Sexual trauma, uh, spousal abuse, uh, whatever it happens to be. Um, we just want to be there for them in the next step of their evolution, of their you know, shoring themselves up and moving forward in their lives and having a place that they can hang out with other women and have the same concerns and just a place where they feel that they're supported. And believed. Yes, yes. I think that goes a long way. Cause it does. In some cases, they're not believed and that's what holds them back. Right. Wow. So how long has the Emma Center been in business? That's a good question. I'm new to the Emma mm -hmm. Center, so I don't have all of my statistics that okay. I should have. Okay. But I think the Emma Center has been around uh, at least, I want to say, eight years. Wow. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get a, a link and a phone number out there for you. So if you have experienced anything on those levels, give them a call. You're not alone. We said that before on this show, and again, you're not alone. Give the Emma Center a call. But there is a story that um, may have helped you evolve to the Emma Center. Yes. We were kind of talking briefly, and uh, you had a near-death experience, which kind of opened you up in that realm and helped people. It did, yes. Um, in 1981, I had a near-death experience when I was in the hospital. and. It was an amazing experience for me because I was at a crossroads in my life. My daughter was six years old. Both my parents had passed away. Oh, wow. And I, I really didn't know what direction I was headed in. Um, so I, I was questioning myself in my life. And I went in to have arthroscopic surgery, which is a very simple procedure, basically. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not on the trunk of your body. You know, it's on, on your appendages. Yeah, so yeah. it's not it's not going to do you in. So for whatever reason, I flatlined in recovery. Now, maybe I was looking for a way to get out. I don't know. Well, didn't somebody say we have five exit times? We have exit times? Somebody told me that. I never knew that. Yeah. I, I would imagine that's a truth. Yeah. Because I know that there have been other opportunities in my life. Wow. Yeah. But you didn't take them. Was it right yet? Yes. And you didn't take it at this time. Right. But Tell us your personal experience. You flatlined. What I happened? Did, did well, you go to the light? Did you see yourself like I was? Oh, I did all of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, people. Oh, my God. Hey, there's my hands. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I started to awaken in recovery, and I saw that they, there was a lot of commotion going on in the bed next to me. And I was kind of like, you know, still groggy and whatnot. And, realizing something was going on and I wasn't sure what was happening and I thought wow I don't really want to be seeing all that stuff you know I'm just coming out of anesthesia and whatnot 
and the next thing I know that they're they're talking to this this person in the bed next to me and they're calling her by my name and I'm thinking well that's ridiculous why would they be doing that they have the paperwork all wrong and I'm not feeling coherent enough or grounded enough or whatever it is to say to them hey that's what's going on here you know and after a few minutes of watching them there must have been four or five people working on this person and I didn't know if it was a man or woman Next thing I knew, I'm hearing the name again, and I, I finally could say, hey, I'm right here and I'm fine. That's my name, and I'm fine. But Next, you were beside the bed. Yeah, no, I was at the foot of the bed the at that point. I was at the foot of the bed watching them. And then the next thing I realized, I'm going up into the corner of the room, and I'm now looking down watching them working on her. And it was me, and I saw me. And you remember all of it. Oh, I remember all of it like it was yesterday. What were your feelings when you look and you go, oh my gosh, that's me that they're working on? You know, I Did didn't... Did you go, well... Oh. I, didn't have, I didn't have any fear. It was kind of like confusing. How is this possible? How is it possible that I'm floating up here looking uh -huh. down? And how is it that they're working on her, me, and I don't feel the connection. I'm not feeling anything. Whoa. Nothing. And I'm feeling sort of neutral about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I got further up, I realized I had disconnected from myself. You know, I wasn't feeling any of the things they were doing. Uh -huh. I, I wasn't feeling any emotion about it. Uh -huh. And kind of like, it just is. It, it is, right. <laughs> I was in that present moment where it was just happening, and yeah. I was privy to the happening of it. Right. And with that, I felt this, this energy kind of pulling me, extricating me out of the room. Uh -huh. And I'm kind of like pulling back from it because I'm not sure I want to go. Yeah. And then it's like everything kind of switched and I'm I'm going forward and I'm going into this blackness. Now, as a child, I was terrified of the dark. Yeah. That was one of the big things in my life was terrified of the dark. Yeah. And here I'm going into abject blackness. Oh. And I remember, and I can still feel it as I think about it, yeah. you know, I remember kind of arching my back so that I'm not going forward, you know, like that's going to stop yeah, like, it. Ah! Yeah, exactly. Try, trying to put on the brakes. Yeah, yeah. And I just keep feeling it from behind, you know, this moving into the blackness. Uh -huh. And eventually there is this, this glimmer, this tiny, tiny, tiny glimmer of light and I just focused on that pinpoint because any time I could see light when yeah. I was in darkness, I knew I was okay. Yeah. And so I'm focusing on this glimmer of light. And as I'm moving, the light is starting to get bigger. Oh. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the light. The light is everywhere. It's everything. Wow. And I'm in the midst of it. Holy mackerel. And all I can feel is this sense of being cherished, this sense of unconditional love as I'm moving into the light further and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And when I get through this blackness, this tunnel to this glimmer, to this light that's now everywhere, in front of me there are, there are I want to say men, there are two rows of beings in front of me and they're dressed in brown monk's clothing. You know, monk's robes mm -hmm. with yeah. the hood, and the hoods are all up. And the one at the end steps forward to speak to me. And that's why I want to say men, because his energy felt paternal. Uh -huh. It felt fatherly. Yeah. It felt caretaking. It felt in charge. It felt supportive and loving. And he looked at me and he said, you cannot stay. Okay. And I felt for the first time in my life that I had come home. Well, we're all, that's where we come from. Right. 
and that sense of belonging, it had been that sense that I had been yearning for my whole life, is that sense of connection and belonging yeah. on that level. And I finally arrived there, mm -hmm. and he's telling me I cannot stay. And I'm saying, how can you send me back after I'm experiencing everything I've ever wanted? Mm -hmm. All the love I've ever wanted, I'm having right here, right now. And he said, you have a child. And I did. My daughter was six years old. Mm -hmm. And my parents were, were deceased. Mm -hmm. And I was divorced. Right. And he said, you have to go back. You have a child. Mm -hmm. And I pleaded my case, and we had the same discussion. And as I'm thinking about my daughter, I'm thinking, who would be right for her? Who would be the one to love and support and take care of her mm -hmm. the way she needed it? Mm -hmm. And my sister, I didn't trust to do that appropriately. My ex-husband was my ex-husband for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> and I thought, there isn't anyone. And in that moment of feeling her and loving her, I was back in my body. Whoa. Because for me, loving her was the answer. Yeah. And I had to do that with her. Right, right. Wow. And don't we all have our own little answers and our own little jobs? Of course. Which leads me to, okay, so you had this wonderful experience. Yes. How did that open you up? You know, where did that take you? You were looking for direction. Right. Where did that take you? Well, it took me to the place of... I came back to help people find their joy. I came back to tell people, as my one friend who's an astrologer said, the good news. The, the good, good news. news, which we're not here to suffer. We're here to have joy. We're here to experience and, and create. Mm -hmm. We're not here to suffer. That's never been the reason we came. Mm -hmm. Then why do we? Because at a certain point, the ego mind, wanting to have control, Ah. taught us these stories about ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. At an age like five, six, seven, we start internalizing things in our brain about what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the stories that we tell ourselves about what we're seeing and what we're experiencing aren't appropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, we use them against ourselves. Yeah. They're, they're never just an experience they're yeah. always it's because you're not good enough or you're not this or you're not you know it's yeah. totally breaking down the confident level yeah well that kind of brings me back I love this writer his name's Eckhart Tolle oh I love him The New Earth yes and he in that book and I always I refer have met to him it. he's wonderful <gasps> I bet he says that the man Jesus said in the Bible that deny thyself didn't mean deny thyself of stuff or love or joy right. You were talking about the ego. Get right. out of the head. Right. You have to lose your mind to have your life. We have wow. to live in our hearts because the only thing that's real is love. Yeah. All the dialogue, all the nonsense, all the negativity, it's like fear. Yeah. We, we all know fear is false evidence appearing real. Right. It's not a reality. We can step out of fear. But fear rules 90% of our lives. Darn it. And we allow it because we're not aware that we don't have to listen to that dialogue in our head. Mm -hmm. That dialogue is just a loop. It's a computer. Right. And so that's where you help these women, too. Yeah. Get out of the head. Get out of the head and get to the story that they're telling themselves. You know, most of them oh. aren't aware of what is the story they're telling about themselves. Yeah, yeah. That they're now ready to change. Wow. That's powerful stuff you're saying right there. Well, once you change the perception, right. it changes the experience of it. Yeah, yeah. So what different perceptions and experiences have you had since um, having your, your near-death experience? It opened well, you up. Yes, I mean... And now you're telling me you kind of, you're able to read people? Yes. And you're, you're more connected. I'm much more connected. And I'm able to see the essence in a person. Okay. Not the story that they tell, not the facade that they wear, not mm -hmm. the protection that they use. Right. But the essence of who they are. Right. The preciousness of who they are. And that's what yeah. I mirror back to them. This is who you really are. Not all that dialogue you tell yourself about yourself. Right. Not that hurt little girl who supposedly did X, Y, or Z, and mom and dad didn't like it. Mm -hmm. That's not who you are. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't what they were trying to tell you. Right, right, right. You know, clarify that information. Yeah, yeah. Allow them to have a different take on it. Right. 
right? And we're all kind of here to learn lessons, too. We need to kind of give ourselves a break. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> a and the first, bit. <laughs> the first thing is to fall in love with ourselves, but yeah. we can't as long as we're owning that story and repeating it, replaying it yeah. all the time. Yeah. Well, tell me about the experience where you, right after all of that happened, that you realized you could do this, that you were aware of yourself at that point going, whoa, this is all different. I'm hearing things. I'm seeing things. It was scary. I mean, I, there was a time where I thought I was psychotic because there was so much information coming in. Really? What was the first experience? Do Gee, you... I, I don't know that I can tell you that. Okay. You know how many? It's 81. It's a long time ago. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Since 1981. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And there have been so many experiences since then. And I have so changed. Yeah numerous times since then right you know without giving in too much information is there one story that kind of sticks out with you in since 1981 that you went up to somebody and you just kind of go whoa oh whoa my daughter who's now 38 oh great when when she was younger and we'd be out and about uh if we were in an elevator you know i would invariably turn around to the person next to me or behind me or whatever and say something to them that either made them cry or laugh because it was a heart opening in <laughs> right. one way or the other. Right. And she would be mortified and say, Mom, do you have to do that kind of thing? But I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, spirit wanted the information out there, right. and I couldn't not say it. Wow. So, I uh, yes, I've done that all of these years. Wow. So I'm, I'm considering you now the lady in the brown monk's robe, ah. a sage. I feel like one because the information coming through, especially at my age, yeah. you know, it, it's very grounded information uh -huh. and it's very clear right. and I so appreciate that. Well, answer me this since you're in tune. Sure. Do you or do you not know that we have spirit guides? Is that true? Yes, we do. We do. We do. And, you know, the most important guide is our high self. Okay. Because that's a connection to source. Okay. But we do have spirit guides and we do have have guides that opt to work with us for certain reasons. Wow. And that changes. Wow. You know, sometimes they become obsolete and you need new ones. Because, Seriously. Because you have shifted and changed or your focus is different or you need uh, guides with different abilities than uh -huh. what the ones ha had that you had. Right, right. And is it true maybe we, we've signed on for different things? Oh, yeah. From the spirit world? Oh, yeah. We have a soul group that we work with. A soul group. A soul group that we work with. and I did you, not know this. This you, is new. Wow. You, you Describe know, the soul group. You know the feeling when you meet somebody and it's like, wow, I know this person. Yeah. And you don't, but, but you, but have you a, do. Yeah, yeah. You have that feeling. Well, they're probably part of your soul group. And what happens is before you, you come back in, reincarnate, you have agreements about how, what you're going to be working on as a group. Because as a the, group? Because you're usually around the same people same okay. you know same energies okay in in each incarnation oftentimes the same ones come in together okay so yeah wow that's why there's a familiarity wow that's why there's that sense of immediate trust okay okay i get it yeah i get it now how did you come up with that how did you learn about the soul group well when i was on the other side you know you you're there's a point in time, now, I didn't have the review that a lot of people have, the life review. I didn't have that. Well, because you weren't going in. Well, people can have that without staying. Seriously? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Many times, okay. many times they have it and they come back with that information because sometimes what's given to them is the information of what they're going to be doing. Oh. And so that's the encouragement to come back and start doing it. Okay, okay. Now, for me, it was just being in that energy you know everything there is to know. In just a... Oh, yeah. In a snap. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we all have that ability. If, right. if you think about when you've listened to somebody, e even listening to me, mm -hmm. if it doesn't resonate in your body, mm -hmm. if, it, if your solar plexus is not comfortable with it, then it's not the right information for you. Right, right. And we can always trust that because the body will never lie. That's why we muscle test because the body doesn't lie. Oh, yes, you're the right. The mind lies, but right. the body doesn't. Right. And we're the only 
bipeds that will seriously walk into danger. Yeah. Everybody else goes. <laughs> well, that's because they're listening. They're, they're yeah. connected in. Yeah. We are too, but we're not quiet enough to hear it. Uh -huh. You have to be quiet to hear it. Right. Right. So where do you think we are now? Is there that awakening really happening at oh, this moment? Yes. The, the amount of people that are becoming conscious now okay. is growing exponentially. Um, Oprah and uh, Deepak Chopra just did a 21-day oh, like meditation. Oh. And it was wonderful. And you did it online. And they had a focus for each and every day. And they had a little bit of dialogue before the meditation. Oprah would do her part of it. And then he would do the meditation. And then you had... Um, uh, a Sanskrit word or phrase that you focused on during the meditation and it was fabulous and you had a journal that you could write in online you could uh, Facebook or whatever to the community and oh, say wow. you know what you're experiencing along the line people were going into remission with cancer and all kinds of amazing things seriously yes. it is really mind over matter it is well our thoughts create our reality so what is it that we want to think about you know th right. the brain only holds one thought at a time and in my world it better be the one I'm wanting not the one my head is trying to tell me that's right wow and for those out there who have a tendency to ruminate which I had for a very long time because I've got a really active mind <laughs> I would superimpose one word so that I wouldn't be hearing this constant negative flow of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the one word for me was green. It's my favorite color. Oh, so I would just repeat green, green, green inside of myself until the dialogue stopped. So I would get that space between the thoughts. Wow. Like That's you have a good a meditation. technique. That's a yeah. Focus on a color, focus on a word. Whatever it is for you that works for you, doesn't matter. It can be a sentence, whatever it is. Right. But you superimpose that in your, in your thinking to stop the rambling. Yeah. Wow. And we so forget that we're connected to everything. And we so forget that we're such big creators. You know, we walk around thinking that life is happening to us yeah. and not realizing that we are creating. Right. Now, not every circumstance is just about us. It's a co-creation right. you know, with other people, but right. we have a choice. Right. We have a choice to know that there's something working on our behalf or something working against us. Is there evil? Seriously? The evil is... Working against, that kind of put that out there. Because people have asked me that. Sure. Um, because my personal philosophy is we are part of the source. I'll use that word. Right. And in my mind, there really couldn't be, in, this is just for me talking, we'll discuss, write your things on the Facebook, okay? <laughs> in my mind, there personally could not be, I cannot imagine a hell and a brimstone fire pit. I really can't. I'm with you. Yeah. I think you're talking about the ego. I think that's where that is. Well, and religion has fostered that, unfortunately. Mm, given. But do you know of evil? Does it exist? Or is it just stuff? It's stuff. It's just stuff. It's there stuff. is no little demon going around going, nah, 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 nah. Oh, there is if enough people focus on the fact that there is. So that's created. Yes. So the think of the thing Lucifer could be our conscious creation. creation. Yes. So then we can undo That's it. That's right. Exactly. <gasps> it's fear. Are you feeling what I'm feeling out there, folks? <laughs> <laughs> we are powerful. Let's take it back. Um, mm. It's that false evidence appearing real. Do we want to buy into that? And I have had psychic attack. I mean, that can occur. By, from what? Like, what is, what is psychic negative thought? Negative thought forms. Okay. Yeah. Negative thought forms, which yes. means entity? Yes. So they are little demons. Well, there can be. When, when we are not holding ourselves in full esteem, mm -hmm. if we are not loving ourselves, if we are not supporting ourselves, if we are listening to that negative stream of dialogue mm -hmm. that brings us down to being the little person, mm -hmm. then we're open to all manner of crap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, can people who, 
What do you say or what have you felt about people who are, or spirits, who are stuck? Doesn't everybody see the light? No. No, and I have... Why is that? I'm, I'm just curious. Because they're still... Often, Why do they need help? <laughs> oftentimes, they're still living their life the way it was. Uh -huh. They don't understand that they're dead. They can't get that. Uh -huh. They're choosing not to. They're choosing not to move on. Maybe they're resentful. Maybe they're, you know, there's an emotion there that they're just dug in with. Yeah. We, we know about that. We can do that, yeah. right? Yeah. So in your case, you were kind of ready. I guess I was. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I learned as a child to go out of my body easily because there was some stuff going on. Oh. So I guess it wasn't a real big leap for me okay. in a way. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, one of the amazing things about dying mm -hmm. is it's very gentle. You know, people are so terrified of the process. Mm -hmm. And it's very gentle. That's nice to know. It's not painful. Yeah. And it's not scary. And yeah. that's one of the things I really want people to know is it's, it's something we need to celebrate just like birth. It's the next level of our existence. It's going back home, as well, I know. It's, it's, back, it's, it's going back it is home. Going, it is going back home. Yeah. But it, it's also almost like graduating. Oh, sweet. You know? Sweet. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not the end of anything. It's just the beginning of the next adventure of our lives. Yeah, a new life. Yes. A different way of living. Yes. A Catholic priest said that, and I still, uh, I still hold that to my heart. Yes. If a woman could look at a child and say, out of the womb, and go, welcome to a new way of living, she'd say it. That's exactly it. So we're yes. going to rebirth yes. into a different way of living. You know, society has taught us to be terrified of dying. Yes, they have, haven't they? Yes, and... I'm around a lot of people who are older yeah. now, and I realize how stuck they are in the fear, which means they're not enjoying their lives right here, right now. Yeah. You know, we do so much projecting into the future. What's this going to be like? And am I going to hurt? Am I going to this? Am I going to that? And, you know, all we need to do is just trust and let go. And be in the now. Yes. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you for coming. And that's good advice. Be in the now, people. <laughs> uh, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Diane. Remember the Emma Center. Um, for everybody here at, in, out here in the Redwoods, I'm Denise Riles. Aloha means hello and goodbye. See you next time. Our sponsors include Humble Pride, which can be seen at Hulverson Park in Eureka, September the 14th between 12 p.m. and 5 p.m. Also uniquely yours for events and special occasions. Contact Elizabeth Adams at 443-5200. Also, the costume box for your costume needs located at 202 T Street in Eureka. Contact either Denise or Rosemary at 443-5200. Also, we'd like to thank one of our sponsors, La Chaparita. They are located at 1718 4th Street, Eureka, California. Their phone number is 707-445-3818, and they specialize in Mexican cuisine.